this first problem has a lot going on. So rather than read this again, I'm just going to go over what happens in the picture, which is we have this block coming in, block A, it hits block B, and it bounces off. Block B is originally at rest, and the question is what happens to block B after the collision? So this is a conservation of momentum problem. So let's look at how we solve this. We look at all of the momentum that we start with, so that's going to be M1 V1 of block A, and then we have block 2, which is just going to be 0. Then after the collision, we have block A. Now, that block is going in the opposite direction, so we need a minus sign in there. And then we have block B after the collision, which is our unknown. So they give us enough to find out the initial momentum, 0.1 times 4. Then we have to remember that block B is going to the left, so we put in a minus sign. And they give us the mass of block B, but we don't know the velocity. So we have all of our knowns, one unknown. Do the algebra on that, and you get positive 3.7 meters per second, which means block B is traveling to the right. In this question, we have a car traveling east. So what I did was I made east positive and west negative. Then the brakes are applied. So the brakes are applied, which are going to slow the car down. The car was traveling east, so the net force is to the west. So therefore, the acceleration and impulse will be to the west. So the best way to do this is to write down our knowns. So we have m delta v and t, and they want us to find the impulse. But like we did in the lesson portion of this, it looks like this is an FT problem, but in actuality it's an M delta V problem. So they gave us the mass and the change in velocity, and all we have to do is find the change in momentum, which is equal to the impulse. Now, we already said that if the impulse comes out negative, and we called west negative, then therefore the impulse is to the west, or we could say negative in our plus minus system. This one is similar to all of these types of problems where they give us a ton of information and we just write down all of our knowns and unknowns. So they gave us the mass, the force, and the change in velocity, and they're asking us for the impulse. So once again, impulse is change in momentum, so we can use m delta v. And finding m delta v, we're finding j. And what's j? 2.2 kilogram meters per second. But remember, kilogram meters per second is also equal to newton seconds. In this one, I did this with the shortcut method. So we have these two carts that are together. They're connected by a spring, and then they shoot apart. The forces are the same, because for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. The accelerations won't be the same. The more massive cart will have a lower acceleration, but the momenta must be the same. So the shortcut method is just to say that the momentum of the 7 kilogram cart, cart A, has to be equal to the momentum of the 3 kilogram cart, cart B. So we just put in 7 times V and 3 times 6, and we get 2.6. They didn't ask for the direction, but if they had, the direction would be to the left, or we could say negative if they had asked us. Once again, a problem with a ton of information. So let's take all this information and organize it. We have the mass, the force, and the time, and they're looking for the change in momentum. So again, impulse is equal to change in momentum, but we also know that impulse is FT and they gave us F and T. So multiplying F by T gives us the change in momentum. What is the magnitude of the average net force acting on the cannon? Well, the force is pushing on the cannon. The cannonball is pushing on the cannon. So for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. Force on cannon equals force on cannonball. So they gave us the 8,000 newtons, so that must be the force that's acting on the cannon. In this one, they are also asking us for a impulse change of momentum problem, 
but it's a little trickier because they're looking for the final velocity. So what I did was I wrote down all of our information, the mass, the initial velocity, which is not the change in this case, and the impulse. So we know that the impulse is uh, equal to change in momentum, so we can find the change in velocity. But remember that the initial velocity was 20 meters per second and the change was 2. So the impulse is acting in the opposite direction of the velocity. If that's the case, the car must be slowing down. If it was going 20 and had a negative impulse or an impulse to the west, it would lose 2 meters per second. So our final velocity is 18 meters per second to the east. We did a question similar to this in the lesson where basically what it's asking us is how could a ball have the same momentum as a bullet? Well, if the ball has much more mass, then the bullet is going to have to have much more velocity. So you can just set the momentum of the ball equal to the momentum of the bullet. Here's the ball, 0.06 times 60. So the lower mass of the bullet means that we must have a much larger uh, velocity of the bullet to have the same momentum. Finally, we have two carts that are connected by a spring, and this looks like a conservation of momentum problem. But all it's asking us for is the force. Now, we know that the spring pushes on the two kilogram block, and the equal and opposite force is the spring pushing on the one kilogram block, so those forces, equal and opposite forces, must be the same. Now, it doesn't mean that the accelerations are the same. The one with the greater mass will have the lower acceleration. The one with the one kilogram mass will have the greater acceleration.